Good afternoon and welcome to today's professional series webinar from the MSU Alumni Association and our Alumni Lens program, Lifelong Enrichment for Spartans. My name is Lisa Parker and I am the Director of Alumni Professional Enrichment for the Alumni Association and happy to bring to you today a presenter who is a great Spartan, Jeff Elman from Chicago. He is co-founder of Urban Bound and a few other companies that I imagine he will tell you about today. And I reached out to Jeff because being in the Alumni Association and being in the area that is primarily responsible for career content, I get a lot of questions from employers on recruiting. How do we find Spartans? And more importantly, how do we keep them, especially those that would be categorized as millennial talent? Because recruiting is an expensive endeavor, as those of you who are joining us today fully appreciate. And Jeff um, has carved himself out to be uh, a, a known leader and thought expert on this topic. I've watched him. Um, I've watched his content and I knew he was the right person for this job. So I'm going to turn the reins over to 2000 alumnus Jeff Elman and I will invite you as you listen to today's webinar to ask questions to Jeff. We have a full hour of his time in the chat area. If the question is not immediately addressed, I'm sure it will be as we get to the conclusion of the cast. Um, but be prepared for an engaging conversation and Jeff, I'm hoping that you can also start out by telling us about Urban Bound and what that company is all about because that's the primary reason I knew you were a good fit for us right. today. So without further ado, Jeff Elm. Thank you so much, Lisa, and thank you for the opportunity to talk with uh, fellow Spartans. So depending on what time zone you're in, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Elman. I'm the co-founder of Urban Bound Hierology and Home Scout. And uh, Lisa, to answer your question, uh, my background's in HR consulting and recruiting for 15 years. And from being in that business, what I saw occurring across corporate America was a dangerous trend. And that trend was that most companies were all dropping the ball at the exact same point in the hiring process, which is, Lisa, we think you're a really great candidate, excited to have you join our company. Here's your job offer, here's your start date, and if you're lucky, here's your sign-on bonus or your lump sum of money. We'll see you then, good luck with your move. And when working with a large number of candidates who are accepting these job offers, what I learned from them was the first impression they had of their employer was they really felt let down by the lack of relocation support they were receiving. And when talking with employers and asking why they weren't providing more, what I learned when it was too expensive to do so. Um, so the birth behind Urbanbound and why we started this company was to solve that problem by building technology that allows millennials specifically to organize and plan their entire move, educate themselves in the city they're moving to, uh, connect to all the right vendors, find housing, and also have access to a relocation consultant. So our goal was to build something very similar to like what Orbitz or Expedia did to air travel, allowing individuals to self-administer a relocation. Um, so for today, I'm really excited to talk with you on the topic of recruiting, onboarding, and retaining millennial talent. Um, I have probably have interviewed more millennials than Oprah, Letterman, Leno combined, and I've learned a lot over the years, and I've employed uh, hundreds of different millennials and look forward to sharing uh, some stories and best practices with everyone in today's webinar. I'd like to do first is to share with you some statistics uh, around millennials. 51% um, of millennials don't feel engaged with their job. 50% of millennials will always listen to other job opportunities, which as a business owner and anyone who's on this webinar who's in HR, that's very concerning to know that 50% of millennials are always willing to talk to a recruiter and, and potentially leave your, your place of employment. So I asked myself the question, why is that? Well, most days, a millennial is probably going to be on Facebook or on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And when you go on LinkedIn, the first thing you're very likely to see is what's happening with your friends. So here's an example. Elise has a new job. Grace has a new job. You're constantly seeing other people that are being promoted or have new jobs, which makes you question, is it time for me to have my next job? You'll also notice that millennials they don't work at an average employer for longer than three years. So when I look at anniversaries on LinkedIn, I'm always fascinated to see that most anniversaries are going to be, you've been there for, congratulations, you've been there for two years, you've been there for one year. 91% of millennials expect to stay at their job no longer than three years. And the last stat I want to share with you uh, is 60% of millennials want to hear from their boss at least once a day. So if you think about you know, baby boomers, 
in their eyes, it's great. They can go one year without hearing from their boss and think that everything's just great. But a baby, but a, a millennial would need to hear from their boss every single day to ensure that the success is happening. So today's agenda, there's three uh, pillars for today's webinar that I wanna make sure we cover. The uh, first is recruiting. And we're gonna dive into strategies and tactics to attract millennial talent. Onboarding, getting started on the right foot. And then retention. You've attracted millennials, so how do we keep them? And throughout today's webinar, it'd be great if you'd like to, uh, please type in any questions and I'm, hap I'm happy to answer them along the way. So create a digital hiring brand. The top five elements to add to your career site, the first is pictures and videos of your team. When I interview millennials and I ask them what they look for in a company, the first thing they always tell me is they look for a great culture, uh, they look for unlimited opportunities to grow, and they view their first impression based on pictures and videos on your career site. Uh, those pictures and videos, I would highly recommend, they're, they're not stock photos. Uh, if you have pictures of your team, uh, re I recommend putting those front and center on your career site as soon as possible. Have your company apply for awards, any type of recognition. Uh, is very important, specifically around maybe best places to work. Uh, those are the type of awards that are going to attract millennials to join your company. Department interviews. Um, one of the things that we do across my companies is each department head will be interviewed. Uh, the results of those interviews will be displayed on your careers page for the individual who's thinking about working at the company to see what it would look, what it would be like to work at the company and work directly underneath his or her manager. The fourth element to the career site is showing career paths. Most millennials will always ask the question of what's next. And the fifth and final uh, area to add to your career site is anything tied to philanthropy. Uh, I know that most millennials in the interview process will ask the question to most employers of what do you do right now to give back to the community? And if you don't have an answer for that, there's a good likelihood that that candidate will not accept the offer. So sharing philanthropic activities on your website will be very important going forward. So here are some examples that we do at Urbanbound. Um, you can see an interview from myself. Uh, so if you're a candidate and you're a millennial thinking about joining our company, you can quickly see you know, what are the qualities I look for when I hire someone to join our team? Uh, what are our company core values? What's my favorite part about managing my team? Um, sites might talk about awards or recognition or uh, areas where and millennials are, are gonna wanna learn more about. Um, sites like Glassdoor are, are, are excellent uh, for you to make sure you have a presence on. This is where millennials likely gonna go uh, before they ever st step foot in your office for an interview. They can quickly see uh, other employees of the organization, the pros of working there, the cons. Uh, it's amazing how much information you can learn. So if your company um, is not on Glassdoor, I'd recommend creating a profile. And if you are on there, I'd recommend updating and reviewing um, your company's reviews at least once a month. Um, one of my favorite career pages is at Enterprise. Uh, Enterprise rent -a does an excellent job of really laying out the career growth plan for a millennial. Um, so you'll notice when you go on Enterprise's website, you can see if you click on any one position, what's the next step after you have success in that role? And what Enterprise has done a great job of is they're able to attract excellent millennial talent and pay less, but because they offer such a great career path, they're able to really attract top talent and their website does a phenomenal job of displaying that. Another company that I find very interesting when it comes to uh, recruiting is, is Zappos. Um, Zappos was just in the paper last week sharing that they no longer believe in job boards. Zappos has gone on a mission right now to only use social media to fill all of their open positions. So their positions will only be found on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and on Facebook, or you would have to know someone at Zappos to get hired there. They no longer believe in job boards. Very interesting approach to attracting millennials. So some questions just came in. Um, what if you don't have a career path? If your company does not have a career path, um, that will be a dangerous trend towards not having successful retention of millennials. Uh, what I found across my companies is that usually after, unfortunately it's after about six months, the question is always what's next? Um, so in the job interview process, we make sure that we cover the entire career path, uh, at least up to a five year period of time. And what are the expectations to get to that next level? Millennials also want to know that it's not going to be just based on tenure, it's going to be based on accomplishments over those years to be able to grow within the organization. Also when it comes to the career page, uh, show philanthropic activities. This is an example of some of my employees 
uh, recently giving back to the Chicago Food Depository. Next, we're going to talk about enhancing your benefits package. Baby Boomer Bob cares much more about health insurance, their 401k, and their standard paid time off. Versus Millennial Mike is going to ask questions around flexible paid time off. Uh, does the company have intramural sports teams? Uh, what type of technology is, uh, is in the office? And uh, any type of paid learning or training. You'll also hear uh, questions around travel. Um, most millennials are the first ones to raise their hand and be open to travel, especially when it comes to being international. Millennials do expect when it comes to modern technology, they're going to expect you know, multiple monitors. Um, they want to have a standing desk, lightweight, lightweight uh, laptops, high-speed internet, uh, the flexibility to work from home, and coffee and snacks uh, is something that is very important in the office. So at my company, uh, we have to attract millennials, we have unlimited vacation days. And what we learned when we put unlimited vacation days in place it allowed us to attract a higher level candidate. Um, but we also learned after doing this for about a year uh, that we also had a, a minimum. So now we have a minimum of a two week vacation that you must take within uh, each year. And that was a key learning point for us because when we actually had the policy of unlimited vacation time, the data behind that showed that the average employee was actually taking less than six vacation days a year. So now we're encouraging people to you know, get out of the office, experience the world, clear your head, and then come back to work fully engaged. Getting back to intramural sports teams, if you have them, that's great. It's even better when you can start taking pictures of these and displaying pictures like this on your website to attract more people to join your team. This is the Urban Bound Volleyball team. And unfortunately, we did not win a championship. Hiring millennials. The top five interview questions that I love to ask when I'm sitting across the desk from a millennial. The first question is, at your last job, what was your boss's name? How do you spell his or her name? When I call your boss and I ask about your performance on a scale of one to 10, what is he or she going to tell me? The reason why I love this question is oftentimes this is truth serum. Uh, millennials are very open to sharing everything with you and they'll tell you things. You know, I, I would, my boss would probably rate me a six because I consistently uh, you know, didn't hit my goals or we didn't have the best relationship. Um, by asking this question, you'll see a lot of candidates uh, squirm in their chair, uh, but they'll give you the answers that you really need to hear to make a well-informed hiring decision. Another question I love to ask is, what is the biggest misperception uh, that people have of you? This question gives tremendous insight into how they really feel about themselves. And oftentimes, I find that the misperception is very accurate. When someone tells you that you know, people think I'm very shy, oftentimes they are very shy. Why should we not hire you? Uh, most companies in the interview process will ask, you know, why should we hire you? I love to ask, why should we not hire you? And the answers that you'll get uh, will blow you away. On a scale of one to 10, how lucky do you feel with your life? Um, and then the example here is, we're looking for people that are gonna give a nine or a 10. We want people who have a positive mental attitude that feel lucky and feel fortunate and even, they've, even if they've had things that have gone wrong in their life, uh, they can usually spin it into a positive learning experience and we want that to be brought to our company versus when someone says, you know, a, a two or a three. And then the final question we like to ask at our companies are, who are the two most influential people in your life? Just to really give, give us some insight into um, who they value and why they value them. Um, so here's a, a quick example of a recent question I asked is, you know, why should I not hire you? And the candidate who I was very interested in hiring um, shared with me that they did not see themselves living in Chicago for more than another 12 months. They saw themselves moving internationally. So asking that question saved me and my company from making a bad hiring decision. Well, asking people on a scale of 1 to 10 how lucky you are, um, I recently had someone tell me that they've been very unlucky because they've worked for three companies. Two of them went out of business. And at every company, they, they did not enjoy working with their boss. Not someone you want to have on your team. Onboarding. So relocation um, is the first step, and it's often overlooked by most companies, especially when they do campus recruiting. Uh, these are millennials. These are people who are moving off campus, and they usually don't have experience with relocating to whatever city they're going to be working in. So more and more companies, we're asking them to provide relocation assistance as a benefit for millennials. 
utilizing technology. Millennials want to uh, utilize technology. They want to self-administer more things on the internet versus talking on the phone. They definitely want to learn from their peers. Um, so if someone is going to relocate to work at your company, uh, they want to learn from the collective intelligence of other millennials who have recently moved to that city. And they want to know where do they live? Um, what do they pay in rent? What apartment buildings are most popular? Um, where do they go for nightlife or what restaurants are most popular? Share that data and share that, that collective intelligence with millennials as they move because it's very important that for them to love your company, they also have to love the city they're living in. Otherwise, they're not gonna be retained. Hyperlocal information. Um, share with a millennial who's moving to a new community to work at your company. Share everything they would need to know about the, the, the community. Uh, get them involved right away outside the walls of your office to ensure a successful transition from point A to point B. Um, provide a partially paid benefit. Uh, the dangerous trend here, as I mentioned earlier, is just giving a millennial a check for two or $3,000 to assist with any type of move. Be willing to offer to pay for their truck rental. Be willing to help pay for a realtor to help them find an apartment. Offer those benefits and they'll go a very long way with attracting top talent. And then the fifth and final reason to offer any type of relocation support for millennials is to help educate them about the process. Most millennials, the last move they had was moving in with mom and dad uh, onto the college campus and they need some guidance along the way. So some examples of what we do for our clients is we're gonna provide data, or if you can do this on your own, that'd be phenomenal to do for a millennial. They love infographics. They love to quickly see, I'm coming to work for your company. Here's where everybody's living. This is the average commute time. And I can dive deeper into understanding what it's gonna be like to work at that company and to live in that community. Selling the city, very important to do, critical to retention. Making their first day memorable is something that I often find most of my clients really drop the ball in this area. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into the first day being very important. At my company, what I do is, is I understand that someone's first day, when they leave my office and they go back home, their spouse or their parents, whoever it might be, the first question will be, how was your first day on the job? The last thing I ever want them to say was, you know, I sat in an office and I filled out paperwork all day. I want their first day to be the most memorable day and I want to invest in people on their way in, not on their way out. Often I have, oftentimes I'll have clients that will invest in someone uh, who's leaving the company. They'll throw a going away party or uh, just a, you know, it's been fun working with you for the last five year party. Um, I don't believe in that. I believe in taking the money I would have invested in an employee who's no longer at my company and I want to invest in throwing a party for someone on their first day and making it the most memorable experience of their lifetime. So when you walk into any one of my companies on your first day, everyone's expecting you and knows that you're gonna be there. Uh, there'll be a sign on the door. Uh, in advance, we're gonna survey you to understand everything about you, where you've traveled, your favorite restaurants, um, your job function in the company. Why that's important is that your first day on the job, we want people to come up to you because uh, they've read the results of your survey and they may have a conversation around, oh, I've been to Greece too, I see that you travel there, or your favorite movie is Spider-Man, so is mine. It really allows people to have a great and open conversation and for others to get to know you right away. We'll actually post the results of those surveys around the entire office um, when that new hire enters our company that day. So it'll be found on the refrigerator, it'll be found on everyone's computers, um, it'll be found in the kitchen. Um, it's just very important to do. Also ensure that at their desk they have their business cards waiting for them. Um, there's a, a note, whether it's written from their boss or from the executive team, and make sure that they're being taken out to lunch uh, the first week on the job. This is an example of some of the surveys that we do at our company. And these, in this example, this would be emailed out to everyone uh, a day before someone's joining the company so you can learn more about them. And getting back to paperwork. Um, if your company right now is having someone join and their first day is all around paperwork, uh, a millennial, that is the absolute worst impression you can possibly have on them. Um, so I'd recommend saving that paperwork for another day or trying to have that paperwork filled out prior to their first day at your office. Creating a social environment. Millennials want to have a structured social environment. Uh, when I grew up, because I'm, I'm a Generation X, my mom would open the front door of the house for me to go out and play with uh, all my friends in the neighborhood. Um, millennials weren't brought up that way. They had a play date that was organized. Everything was planned. Um, at a company, they're looking for a social environment that's going to be planned and organized for them. Um, so if you plan events 
uh, make sure that you plan them well in advance, get it on the uh, millennials calendar, and they'll be there and they will love that. Uh, a question just came in. Um, I'm curious how the audience feels about some of the interview questions. I'm sorry that I didn't, that came in a minute ago. Um, if you have any questions about the interview questions that I provided, uh, please uh, add that to the left side of your screen. Or if you have any questions that you want to share as well that you use when you're interviewing millennials. Team building activities are extremely important for millennials. So at our company, what we do is we provide uh, different events such as champions dinner. So if that for that quarter, you hit your goals, we'll have a champions dinner. Um, or we'll have a theme around the entire year uh, that gets the entire company you know, really working in the same direction. That theme might be uh, a, a company trip to Vegas or uh, a, a trip to uh, a big sporting event or a concert. But try to create more themes to get the team working together towards a common goal. We also uh, will do a lot of company offsites and retreats. Uh, the feedback we always hear from our millennials is that they want to have a voice. They need opportunities to have that voice. Um, so having offsites and retreats will allow individuals, individuals to do that. So what we've done um, is we've done retreats and offsites that will allow everyone to really work well with one another. And what's nice about the offsites is we explain that this is a chance to really work you know, on the business and not work in the business. So you're able to work from 40,000 feet up and look down at the company and offer some advice um, and really best practices that you've seen, maybe at other jobs you've worked at, that we would want to bring into our companies. Um, we do exercises such as you know, start, stop, and continue. And this is uh, an opportunity for everyone to share what we should start doing at the company, what we should stop doing, and what are things that are very important that we continue to do at the company. And we'll also do some exercises around commonality. So if you think of speed dating, uh, a chance for everyone to sit across from one another and in under 60 seconds, they look for as many commonalities as they have with one another. So maybe they're from the same hometown or they like the same sports or the same restaurants. Uh, but really to kind of, not force, but at least get them together to have those type of conversations they might not be having across different departments at work. We also do team building activities um, around like TED Talks. So uh, allowing in, in individual employees to find TED Talks that have inspired them uh, to get in front of the entire company uh, to play a 15 to 20 minute video and then for everyone to share you know, how that video moved them or how that video taught them a different way of thinking. Oftentimes uh, for team building activities I'll see companies that would do company barbecues or picnics. Um, one of the best events that I've done at my company was I hosted uh, a, a barbecue at my house and many of my employees told me that was nice for them to see a different side of me. Uh, be able to come into my home, see my wife, see my dog, see my children. Um, so I recommend any manager to invite employees to your house to really create that team environment. The final thing for team building uh, for millennials is the daily huddle is something that uh, we found to be critical for that ongoing and open communication. Um, at 8.50 a.m. every morning, uh, we will have a daily huddle. All employees are at the huddle. It's about 7 to 10 minutes. And we're just talking about what goals we had for the day before. Did we hit those goals? Did we not? What goals we have for today? Now, what are some of the key learnings that we have that we want to share with others? So it really contributes to a positive team environment. Here's some examples of some of the team environment uh, or, or contest uh, results that we've had where people celebrate success. Uh, this is a trolley ride that we just had two weeks ago in downtown Chicago. When we talk about retention and retaining millennials, one of the things that I found is, that is, is routine feedback. So with routine feedback comes anonymous surveying, mentorship programs. Many mentors want, sorry, many individuals want to mentor millennials. Uh, it's a great opportunity also for them to learn what a millennial is thinking and some of the new technologies that they're using. Uh, so if you don't have a mentorship program in place, this is something that when millennials are often going through an exit interview and we ask the question of, you know, what did you value most about the company? What do you wish that we did differently? When we did not have a mentorship program in place, that was something that caused to a higher turnover uh, a few years ago. Having a 30, 60, 90 day plan um, with a new hire who's a millennial to check in once a month uh, to ensure that they're developing the right habits to be successful. We found that the first 90 days on the job are the most critical time for someone to develop the right habits to be successful. And if they didn't stick to a plan, there was a good chance that they would not be successful with the company. So inserting that plan into place uh, really helped improve feedback, but also with retention. 
360 de degree reviews allows the coworkers of the, of the millennial to review him or her to make sure that they're, they're meeting up to the standards of the company and they match the core values. Um, and it also gives more data points besides just the manager conducting the review. Uh, so 360 degree reviews really help uh, enhance the likelihood of that millennial being successful with more uh, da data and more feedback from coworkers and, and peers. Along feedback is town hall meetings. Um, at my company, we do a town hall meeting once a month. Uh, this is a chance for everyone to get together and ask any question that they might be thinking about. Uh, we ask they submit most questions in advance, uh, but what usually happens is in, in the town hall meeting, you can raise your hand and ask any question, and I'm happy to share answers and talk about the future of the company with that individual. Uh, in an example of anonymous surveying, um, a tool that I feel strongly about for millennials is Tiny Pulse. Uh, Tiny Pulse is software that uh, we send out a, an email once a week to all of our employees. In, in that email, we ask one question. That question is this week's question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how well are you recognized? Uh, I'm sorry, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well are you recognized when you do great work? Uh, this is a great data point for us. Another question might be on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how, how happy are you with your job? Uh, this is an amazing opportunity for us to see the results of, the, of these questions. Uh, in the past, the reason why I would struggle as a business owner or in HR was I would have an employee come into my office and say, Jeff, you know, morale is down. Morale has been down for about a week or two. Um, I couldn't measure that. I had no data point behind that. But from using software like Tiny Pulse, I can actually see a trend at my company and I can see that we went from a 7.8 in terms of employee happiness to a 9.2. And I can try to look back over that period of time and see what we did differently to make sure that we continue to do that. It's also nice about Tiny Pulse at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's the opportunity for cheers for peers. Um, millennials love recognition. Oftentimes they love recognition just as much as they love getting an increase in pay. Um, so through the software, if you have a peer that's doing a really great job, you can submit a cheers for peers that will go directly to uh, you know, me in this example, and I'm able to read that information out to the entire company to provide recognition and ongoing feedback, which once again goes back to that retention of millennials. We hear oftentimes from millennials that they want to be involved in more projects at work. So some of those projects are historian. So we'll have an historian. We'll say, you know, your job for the next year is to take pictures at all company events, whether it's giving back to the community, whether it's an intramural sports team. Uh, we would like you to be the historian. We've created the culture club. So a small group of people that are responsible for maintaining the culture to ensure that we're continuing to celebrate success and doing fun activities. That goes along with the social chair. The social chair is going to help plan you know, the holiday party or big events. We also have our philanthropy group, ensuring that at least once a quarter we're doing something to give back to the community. And then the fifth thing uh, for really the, ret the retention of our team is we have a growth team. And the growth team is a team that we'll give large goals to that over a period of 12 weeks we're expecting to accomplish those goals to ensure that the company can uh, continue to move at a fast pace. So whether it's interdepartmental interaction or a special project, millennials want to learn new things and feel like they are contributing to the growth of the business, such as the growth team. The growth team is something that we uh, started doing about one year ago. Because we had more employees frequently come up to us and asking, how can we be on the executive team? How can we be on the leadership team? How can we do more than what we're doing day to day as part of our job? And that's how the grill team was born at Urbanbound. So for today, the five key takeaways before I start taking questions. Um, first is update your careers page. Second is ensure your hiring brand is strong specifically on sites like Glassdoor, knowing that we're, that's where most millennials will be going. Third is provide the opportunity for ongoing feedback, such as tools like Tiny Pulse. Fourth is if you're going to relocate any employee, make sure you offer some type of relocation assistance as the first impression for onboarding. And then the fifth takeaway is make sure you have a defined career path tied to milestones and not just tenure. So I'm now going to open up the webinar to questions. Okay, and Jeff, I'm going to get started with some of those questions until people uh, uh, 
come up with some uh, of their own. But I'm thinking in terms of your initial points on millennials not being as inclined to go to the job boards, which I completely agree with. In fact, I, I, I oftentimes have employers wanting to send me uh, a job posting to put someplace. I'm like, I, they're not going to see it. What are good ways to um, increase your visibility with millennials in the places where, where they're going to be, whether you're specifically talking about a job or talking about your company? What's, what's the good way to be spotted? So it depends on the type of position that you're hiring for. Uh, but what I've seen tremendous success in is, uh, is on campus. Specifically, I've had clients that have hired campus reps or, you know, or brand ambassadors uh, to go out and, and spread the good word about the organization. So if a company had an intern and the intern is going back on campus for another year before they graduate, are really getting them involved and in being a re referral source for top talent. Are also working with professors mm -hmm. at, at universities. They'll usually uh, help spread the brand of that employer. It's interesting because at companies like mine, uh, when I look across, we probably have about 120 employees between our companies, um, over 100 of them came from a referral. So more and more companies are not using job boards uh, because it's really easy to take your job opening and post it on, you know, on Twitter or on Facebook and through everyone's personal networks, uh, get referrals into your organization quickly. So also incenting your current employees who understand your culture, understand you know, what, what it takes to be successful there, getting them to you know, really buy into helping grow the team and, and look for talent. Do you find that um, your employees necessarily know how to do that? And, and, and does it matter? Like I'm thinking most environments aren't just exclusively made up of millennials or exclusively made up of generation, generation X. Um, so it, it, and it's easy to get referrals from people that are already part of our group right? So it might be easier for me to find other 40-year-olds to work with me versus finding emerging talent. Um, so what do you do if, say, your company isn't populated with many millennials and you're, and you're needing to try to make that reach from a referral standpoint? Um, so, well, many of the times they don't know what to do or how to network. So we'll, we'll provide it for them. So I'll, I'll literally say, in an email, please copy and paste this message and, and put this on LinkedIn. Um, or uh, here's a three by five note card that we brand with our company and the top five reasons why you might want to work here. Um, when you're out in public and you meet someone you think would be a great fit, would you please hand them this card? And by the way, if we hire them, there's an incentive for you of X, whatever that incentive would be at your company. So for example, we hire salespeople frequently. Yeah, and, and I know people uh, so we hire salespeople frequently. So I've, I've said to my team, um, when you're out at a restaurant and you meet a phenomenal waiter or waitress, give them this card. Or when you're at Nordstrom's and, and someone helps you, you know, buy a great shirt or a great skirt um, and they're, they're offering tremendous service, those are people that I want to know. Um, so please give this information to them and let's get them in our office for an interview. And that's how we've done a, a lot of great hiring was through our own employees thinking that way. It's great when you can get them to think that way because you're experiencing people in the moment uh, where, they're, where they're demonstrating their skills and talents. Um, you said about 51% of millennials don't feel engaged at work. Why is that? So 51% of the millennials are not engaged at work because they're, they're usually thinking about what's next or they're very distracted. Um, so whether it's being on Facebook, uh, being on Twitter, uh, being on their phone, so or not having a common goal. Um, if they don't have goals that they're striving for or the opportunity for a promotion, if they're just doing their day-to-day -day responsibilities of not knowing the end result, um, they won't be engaged. So it's it's kind of letting them millennial know that if X, Y, and Z happens by this date, this is what's next. And then if that happens by this date, this is what's next. But when they can see the light at the end of the tunnel, the results are amazing. Um, and actually, they'll tell you, you know, tell me what I need to do and then get out of my way. And you, they'll usually accomplish that goal. But if they don't know what's next around the corner, then that's when engagement decreases significantly. I think that's a great point about the goals. Um, and, and I'm thinking even beyond that where uh, 
not everybody is being given enough to do at work for how fast they work through things. In fact, I remember uh, uh, having a conversation with a student on campus about how it doesn't look like students are studying as much as I did back in my day. And he's like, well, I don't have to go and spend hours looking up things at the library like you did. I can go to Google and accomplish that in a shorter period of time. And so we're not necessarily adjusting our workloads for the capacity that some of these folks have with their technical ability. Right. So Lisa, I just had like a, a uh, Ron typed in saying, it seems like our millennials um, are not engaged or don't appear as productive as, uh, productive as some older employees. You know, why is that? And that goes back to giving the millennial structure. They crave structure. Um, in exit interviews, if, if you ask someone, you know, why are they leaving? Um, you might hear often, there wasn't enough structure on this job. I need more structure. So helping build that plan either for or with the millennial for them to execute against um, will be very important when it comes to engagement. Another thing with engagement, so I had an opportunity last week. I was in San Francisco, and it was nice because I was in the offices of Facebook and LinkedIn and Box and Twitter and Airbnb. And the one thing they all had in common across the board was it was every office was the same. It was a very open, collaborative environment where you were engaged with your coworkers 24-7. It was a place, all these offices were places that you didn't even want to leave. You know, if it's 5 o'clock, people are going to probably be there till 6.30, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock um, because they were fully engaged and the office was set up from day one to be collaborative. So if you have you know, high cubicles uh, or everyone's in, in private rooms, um, you will not have an engaged millennial workforce. And I'm seeing Emily uh, noted the challenge is finding what they're passionate about. If they're working on something they don't enjoy, they will not stay. Um, and and I, I, I've definitely heard that as well. And I think a lot of people are trying to figure out how do we balance that because not we don't always have the opportunity to fill their fill an individual's day, fill an employee's day with things that they're passionate about. There's going to be things that are potentially boring. And so how do how do we navigate that when we've got things that we've got to get done inside our organization? We, we it can't be it can't maybe it can't be fun all the time. So I'm happy to share with you, Lisa, what we've done. Um, to Emily's point about you know, trying to help them be, become passionate um, towards what they're doing or working towards the end result. Um, There's a book I read a while ago called The Dream Manager, and we inserted the Dream Manager into our company. What the Dream Manager does. Is allows you to sit across from every one employee and ask them, okay, so if you make, you know, seventy-five thousand dollars this year, what does that mean to you? Like, what are your dreams? What do you want to do with that? And you can break that down with an employee. So, you know, I want to travel. Um, I want to, I want to have a material thing like a watch or a car, or I want to, uh, you know, join a gym and hire a personal trainer. But when you know these things about your employees. This is where engagement comes in because now I'm able to say, I know that one of your goals was to travel to Hawaii. That's a place you've always want to go. Congratulations on, on earning $75,000. Will you earmark, and I'm going to help you earmark $3,000 of that to get out to Hawaii because I want you to enjoy that trip based on the hard work of your, you know, the, the hard work that you put into the business this year. And that is one of the key things I've learned about engagement is, is knowing that if they're passionate about dreams and hopes and goals, my job is to have that open and honest conversation with them and then help them get there. I think I think that's a great point. Um, I loved your tiny pulse survey, by the way. I wrote that down. I think we're going to put that in place here. Um, one thing that I've noticed, though, is that I think um, many organizations have gotten have become good at soliciting feedback, but they don't always act on the feedback. And some of the things that I hear from millennials specifically is if you ask me my opinion and then don't do anything with it, it's it's a it's a big negative. Right. Do you find um, so I the, to the point about flexible time off and, and having flexibility and, and then to the point that you know having unlimited vacation days um, created a problem that people they still weren't taking enough right um, so it, it, it appears Millennials are 
still working harder and longer, which I think a, a number of people are assuming the opposite. I mean, I hear conversations that people watch their parents lose their jobs in the downturn of the economy, and so they don't want to give their lives to their job anymore. They want freedom. They want to travel. But it sounds like maybe some, some there are some misconceptions there about millennials' commitment to the work environment. Yeah, I, I found that that is that is a misconception. Millennials want to work. They absolutely want to work. They want it. They're no different than really other generations when it comes to their work ethic, in my opinion. Um, they just need more direction and more structure, and what they're capable of is 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 amazing. For the companies, though, when we're talking about the career path, and I agree with you that they do want to know what's coming next. They do want to know what they can be working toward. Um, but many companies that are still adjusting from the downturn in the economy um, and trying to piece back maybe positions that they lost aren't always clear on on what could potentially come next um, and, and maybe aren't even able to dangle a title, right? Um, do you have solutions for how they can uh, keep making that job feel different or what you've seen others do if they're if they're not able to promote say every two years so I, I have seen companies where it comes down to there's, there's not another job opportunity um, but they do use title you know they might put senior in front of the title or little things that just make someone feel a little bit more important or they might give them more uh, leadership opportunities or to be involved in something like a growth team or on a leadership team so they can't give them a promotion they can't create a new job for them but they can create more opportunities to be a mentor, uh, to be a leader, and, and that is something that's extremely valuable, uh, that's priceless, especially as they're building their resume. Uh, they need more experiences to talk about than just their day-to-day -day responsibilities of the job. Mm -hmm. And in those mentoring relationships, um, is that something, how, is, how are the companies that you've seen do with a program like that driving it is it is it just something organic where hey if you need a mentor you know and you're willing to be a mentor check this uh, check this sign up sheet or is somebody driving this process and making sure that these matchups make sense so it, it depends on the company so in my company um, the the new hire who's gonna be looking for a mentor um, will actually get to it's it's a matching process so anyone who wants to be a mentor will meet all the potential mentees and then they can also they can submit their information to me as to who they're looking for as a mentor, and we're looking for a match because we want to make sure the mentee is excited about their mentor and the mentor is excited about their mentee. And then we basically just give a budget. So we say, here's a budget for you to be a mentor. We're expecting you to have X number of lunches or X number of dinners or drinks after work, um, just to have open communication. But what we've learned over the years is that the person who gets more value out of that relationship um, is actually the mentor because the mentee is teaching the mentor so many things as technology continues to change so rapidly, uh, they feel really excited to, in, invigorated to have this opportunity to learn firsthand from someone who maybe is 22 or 23 years old. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know it's a popular conversation at Michigan State. We have a number, number of alumni who are very interested in, in being a mentor to students and students who feel they want a mentor, um, but getting that right chemistry is, is, is the challenging, is always the challenging part. So if millennials are, and I, I think it's it's not just, I think it's catching on. I mean, I'm seeing older professionals when it when it comes to work environments that are more mobile. They're they're looking more about thinking more about moves. In fact, many of them are thinking the fact that prior to the downturn in the economy, they were with an employer for 10 or 15 or 20 years became a problem for them because they looked dated or they looked like they um, were afraid to take risks and move on. So. Uh, it seems like this trend of, of moving jobs um, every three years or so is somewhat here to stay. Do you, are you seeing employers that are benefiting from, from the transition, or is this something that we need to really try to combat and, and, and retain people for longer periods of time than, say, three or five right. years? Um, well, I think we have to combat it. I think having you know, an employee, knowing that you know, your, your workforce is going to turn over, and every three years you're, you're losing an employee or that one employee that you work so hard to recruit, uh, the time and money and training and resources that go into that employee, knowing that their first you know, maybe six months on the job, they're not even adding that much value to the company. And, and in fact, you're investing you know, thousands of thousands of dollars to you know, get them off the ground. Um, so turnover is, is never a good, well, I should say never. 
turnover is a good thing uh, sometimes, but the key is that at our companies from day one, we're always measuring you know, retention. Um, and we're, we're, we're proud of that. And we have, a, I think it's a 94% retention rate. And a lot of things goes back to everything that I talked about today. But when I, I used to, I have a different attitude. I used to look at resumes when I saw that someone, you know, moved jobs every two or three years, and this would be someone I probably would not want to interview. Um, but now I'm finding that that is the norm. Um, so I, I have to open up my eyes and, and when I search a resume to be more open-minded as to why they left their company, because oftentimes um, there's good reason behind it. But it, it is the, it is a trend, and it's here to stay. Well, and it seems too that the consultant mindset is really kind of there in these emerging professionals. In fact, many, in addition to their jobs, also have side things that they do where, you know, they're maybe they're a creative person, they're your graphics designer, but they also have a graphics design business outside of it. Maybe that they even started in college because they were using it to help pay for, you know, tuition and they never shut it down. So um, it appears to be a different cult, uh, culture. I have one more question and then I, just, I definitely want to encourage people. We're, we're coming to the end here um, to if you want to pose a question to Jeff to get it in there um, but you you mentioned some of your interview questions which I really liked and I, I liked reasons why we should not hire you that's so much better than tell me your five strengths and weaknesses right. type of approach um, but when it comes to relocating candidates and, and, and I guess I'm going to ask you to even think beyond just the millennial although you're welcome to keep it in that um, are there ways that you can tell that really this person is 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 probably going to be a flight risk even if they believe in their heart i want to move to chicago i want to be in chicago for the foreseeable future are there or, or i want to move back from the east coast to, to michigan are there cues that you can pick up on uh, as to how well this person's thought out what this move is going to mean to them um what i find is by asking the question you know, do you see yourself staying in, in Chicago for you know, longer than X period of time? Or um, a flight risk is usually when you look at you know, someone's average commute time to, to work. Um, you know, I know that my employees on average, if they're commuting from the suburbs of Illinois uh, to downtown Chicago, um, that's not something you can do every single day for a, a very long period of time. So when you look at data behind uh, potential flight risk of someone not being retained, um, it's, sometimes it might be tied to asking them my questions, but also understanding what their commute time is to get to, to and from work. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, moving to the D.C. area, of course, I'd lived in Michigan, which was real pretty easy commute-wise, commute and, and then I lived in Dallas, which was dicey, but I was in the Fort Worth area, not so bad, and then I got on that outer circle, that loop, uh, Virginia, D.C., right. and I just had an interview. And it was a great interview, and I'd driven that time when it wasn't rush hour, so no problem. And then on my way back to my hotel, rush hour, I uh, called him right from the car, and I said, i, I got to tell you right now, even if you give me big money, don't let me take this job because I'm not going to be able to Absolutely. do this on a daily basis. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. In fact, um, it, we need to – are there good ways – are people welcome to be in touch with you? What's a, What are good ways for people to connect with and, and follow your your company and, and be in touch with you? Sure. So the, the best way to get in contact with me is uh, via my email address, which is the letter J, okay. and my last name, Elman, E-L-L-M-A-N, at urbanbound.com. And I'll type it in here for everyone to see. And you can also okay. call me at any time. I love talking to fellow Spartans at 312-377-2650. Okay. And, and I do, he, uh, Urban Bound is also on Twitter, at Urban Bound, I believe, if you follow that. And, and I think Urban Bound um, Twitter, if you're looking for uh, engaging content, um, I, I think just naturally you guys are putting things out there that I, I, I've noticed that when people are trying to build, be noticed through social streams, sometimes they're just posting or, or really building up noise around the time that they need need to be noticed, which of course guarantees they won't be. And Urban Bound does a wonderful job of of keeping content out there. Thank Sharon, you. Um, Sharon's made a point. As a millennial, I agree with most that's been discussed, although benefits was discussed. One main point I believe most people forget is compensation. Looks like she's adding to that. 
it, it seems to me, because we have, in, in fact, those of you may be interested in knowing, we have a destination survey of recent um, grads that is produced every year for spring and summer grads. And I'm, I'm going to put the link up to it. If you click it now, it's going to pop you out of our room. Um, but just know that it's there. Um, oops, I should have put the www for a hyperlink for you. But in looking at salary trends, it's really interesting because we see some that are coming right out of campus and, and really commanding top dollar. And, and then there seem to be those that are coming out taking more, um, I don't know if it would be considered project-oriented work that compensates a little bit lower in that middle seems to be hard. So most of us have the largest amount of student loan debt and tend to change roles due to compensation. OK, so Sharon, you think you're, people are looking for ways to keep improving their, their bottom line. What do you see in Chicago, Jeff? I mean, is, I mean sh Chicago is kind of a place where I assume you go and you, you tend to uh, experience the best salary outcomes. And so Sharon makes a really good point there when it comes to you know, compensation and the reason why people are leaving, especially the millennials with student loans. Um, I recently read that over 60% of millennials are over $20,000 in debt uh, right when they graduate college. So that makes complete sense. And, and, and having compensation uh, to ensure, you know, in, increasing compensation to ensure that you're able to pay off those loans uh, is very important. And we make sure that we have you know, ongoing conversations to understand if people feel that they are undercompensated. And that's what Tiny Pulse will allow us to do. Uh, I've had employees, you know, anonymously submit messages to Tiny Paul saying I feel like I'm working hard and getting great results and not being compensated for it and I can anonymously write back to that person I'm sorry that you feel that way you know, please stop in my office and let's have a conversation around this so at least I can have that conversation before they start going on job interviews to look for a higher paying job because maybe I am willing to pay them more because they are producing great results for the company uh, but compensation is one of the key reasons why people uh, are not able to retain millennials but it goes back to that open communication and having an outlet for them to have that conversation with you immediately when that happens. Well, and I'm even thinking, of, of course, student loan debt we hear about, but I know credit card debt is a big issue too. And, and I remember when I graduated from Michigan State in 1995, um, though it wasn't a big trek, I made my move to Detroit. And um, I'm, I'm a small town girl from southwest Michigan, and I had that MBNA credit card. And I stupidly put started putting my rent on my credit card until my paycheck started coming in because mm. that was what it seemed to do. And it took forever to pay that off. So I'm even thinking in the relocation um, uh, scheme of things, probably having resources for good financial management in those early stages of a new job or, or maybe a relo for a new grad um, might help curb their need to have to keep looking for more money because they've dug themselves into some pretty significant debt to take your job. So, well, very good. Jeff, any closing points or remarks that you'd like to make before we wrap this up? No, Lisa, I just appreciate the opportunity to, uh, I, I love how it's Spartans helping Spartans, and this, is, uh, this has been a lot of fun for me, and uh, hopefully uh, many of you have a few takeaways that will help you be more successful in your day-to-day -day, uh, responsibilities at work. Yep, very good. And, and as promised, the recording of this webcast will be available on SpartansHelpingSpartans.com. That link is up above. You will see um, a top tab for recorded webinars, and you are welcome. That should be up probably later this afternoon. So thank you, Jeff, for your time with us today. Our next uh, professional series webinar will be two weeks from today, where Laura Labovich, who is a um, LinkedIn blogger, she's a Spartan, but she is an official LinkedIn career blogger, is going to be talking uh, to us about how to safeguard our careers um, in the event of potential layoff. So um, we look forward to you joining us for that today. And we're seeing some thank yous roll in. And Jeff, um, again, thank you for being such a great Spartan. Go green. Go green. <laughs>